What do you get when you have two microphones, a bottle of bourbon, and plenty of time to kill? It's the Bourbon Talking Podcast with Billy and Jimmy. Glad you found us. Sit back, relax. Let's see what we get into. We do podcasts. And this one. Podcast stuff. We do podcast stuff. And the name of the podcast is It's the Bourbon Talking. We have yet to have any, and we're already struggling over here. We need some. This is the 49th episode of This Barber Talking Podcast. And so we're going to... What are we going to do for the 50th? Drink bourbon. Oh, we're going to have a black balloon podcast. <laughs> and we need some black balloons. <laughs> well, we're supposed to get a birthday cake for our one-year anniversary, and we didn't do that. Yeah. Laura, make the cake. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get no cake. We didn't get no cake. We didn't. We no. Hear my English. I heard it. (laughs) It's a fine education in the South. We didn't get no darn cake. Where'd that there cake? So, anyways, um, welcome to episode forty nine, everybody. Let's begin. What are we drinking today, Jimmy? We are drinking Brothers Bond Straight Bourbon Whiskey, hand selected batch. 40% 40% alcohol by volume, 80 proof. So this is what we're going to try today. Outstanding. Pop that cork, Big Daddy. Let's do this. Hey, John, sorry. I left my bourbon glass at home again. I lied to you. I ain't the first time. No, did I say that out loud? <laughs> yeah, it's only the second time I've lied to you. All right, let's try this Brothers Bond. Here we go. Going in for the per- first pour. Mm. But, John, look. I got my glass. Jimmy's got his glass. And I'm using the finger holder today. All right, here we go. We're going in. Wow, that has a strange, that's, that's a different flavor. I don't think I've ever. Hmm. Well, I, and, and stick around to the end, and we're going to grade this thing and talk about it. But. I'm going to say the first sip was nothing I was expecting. Yeah. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Hmm. It's a perfectly balanced expression. Yes. Hmm. Anyways, Good. hey, we're going to talk about it at the end and the the different flavors that may or may not have come out. And um, in our professional opinion, we're not professional. We're, we're we're close right. to it. We're self-proclaimed professionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Self-proclaimed, self-certified. I'll, I'll make I'll make a card. A card. Yeah, Certi- <laughs> certified bourbon taster. Yeah, yeah. just ask me. <laughs> yeah, just ask me. I'll tell you. <laughs> All right. Well, gosh darn, we have made it to the end of the week. It's Friday. Yep. Don't know what day you'll be watching it. Depends on how fast I edit the podcast. But in podcast land, today's Friday. In podcast, so, oh, in real time, it's Friday. In podcast land, when you watch it, it'll still be Friday. Yeah, it's Friday somewhere, probably. Yeah, somewhere over there. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, what we got going on today? The government's about to attack Texas. I think. Oh my Guess we're going to talk about that maybe a little bit. Well, before we get into that war, can we talk about a a different war? Yeah, which war, war would you like to talk about, Jimmy? Uh, the Korean War, because <laughs> yes. uh, a couple of days ago, we had the honor to uh, escorting a, uh, I'm going to say local, but it was in Valdosta. He's from Valdosta, Georgia, which is a couple hours away from us here. And this gentleman, uh, Master Sergeant Roy Barrow, in 1953, was in Korea. Uh, went MIA, and they were finally able to identify his remains. And we escorted him to Valdosta, where he will be laid to rest tomorrow with his family and friends, you know, maybe extended yep. family. But He's been lost for 70 yeah. years. And th- thanks to this DNA process that the government has begun to utilize to identify remains, this is becoming more and more common, and it's awesome. Yeah, we're actually being able to identify these uh, men and women who, you know, perished through the wars and through DNA through their family, and this is great. But it was actually nice to be able to escort uh, the master sergeant home uh, Wednesday. 
Yes, it was an honor. It yeah, was an honor. Great honor. It was a great honor. A lot of bikes, and you know, with that it, again, it was just uh, an honor and a privilege to be able to escort that gentleman home. So, welcome home, uh, Master Sergeant. Absolutely, welcome home. Good to be able to to be a part of something. Like yeah, that. you know, and you know, with that, I mean, I hate to, and we'll throw some pictures up of the escort. You know, a lot of a lot of motorcycles. Uh, you know. It was it was really a good event. We handed it off to another motorcycle uh, riders out of Georgia who we, we escorted them through Florida. They escorted them through Georgia to get them home. So we'll post some uh, pictures of that, you know. And with that, there's another war that's about to happen in the U.S. You want to start it off? I think Biden was going <clears> to... <throat> Yeah, I think Biden was going to launch attacks on Texas after 1 p.m. today. And uh, Billy's waiting for the power to shut off so he can do two or three takes. <laughs> there's only a few things inside the camera shot here at the podcast. And one is that curtain that the dog keeps walking past, flapping the curtain. So um, <laughs> just waiting for him to get tired and pass out. I think he's and, there. Um, it's getting close. It's getting close. <laughs> he's, he's on the floor. All, he's laid out. So, uh, anyways, do you want to continue with? Uh, yeah. So uh, Biden should be attacking here. Texas here in any minute. It's uh, two o'clock p.m. here in Florida. So they had till one o'clock, which is now one o'clock in Texas, huh? Yeah. Yep. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's uh, apparently uh, the governor of Texas uh, is not going to obey with the Supreme Court and give in to the Biden administration, and they're holding their own. So yeah. He here just a few minutes ago reiterated Texas will not comply. Yeah, so uh, we could be at a civil war a lot sooner than we thought. The feds told him to take down the concertino wire. He doubled it. <laughs> he did. He Put doubled. up more. <laughs> uh, so, no. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's okay. Nah, that happened in a day. <laughs> and come and take it. <laughs> yeah. That's just a situation. I mean, you know, everybody out there is following orders from the bottom to the top, from the top to the bottom. And, uh, yeah, so who folds first? I don't, don't think know. Texas will. I really don't think they will either. Yeah, and Biden maybe go back, go back to his F-15 comment. Yeah. You know, carpet um, bomb Texas. What? <laughs> what an idiot! I'm uh, sorry. I know he is our president, but he's an idiot. And highlight that and send this to the White House. I said it. They heard you on your cell phone earlier today. It's okay. They're listening. Yeah, it was. I was a lot louder and a lot meaner on the phone. That's why that box man's parked out front and the black helicopters keep flying over. <laughs> Uh, Every man. time we talk on the phone, we hear that beeping in the background. Yeah, that's the van recording us. <laughs> Conspiracy 101 over here on the right. Uh, we'll get to that segment of the podcast here very soon, buddy. Oh, good grief. What <laughs> what aliens coming in now? Let's see. I think I had some. Did I have something lined up? I'll have to edit this out of the podcast because I'm supposed to always act prepared. What was it? Well, hmm. He forgot. Bruce broke his concentration. Yeah, he's got me all flustered and whatnot. And he's snoring now. Oh, he's out. Looks like a walrus. Down goes Frasia. Got this audio issue. It's driving me crazy. Or what now? You can't be a perfectionist when you don't have, know how to operate the equipment that you're using. It becomes very frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I want everything perfect, but damn it, I've only had the thing for over a year. You figured I'd know how to use it. By well, now. you think, but you come in and you play with all the knobs and twisting and turning and sliding, and you, you well, do it, it every single time. You're just like, it's, fun, it's, it's, it's just funny. Just don't touch it. You get it where you want. You leave it alone. I do. And then I'm editing later on. And I'm like, ooh, I hear that. And then I, I tell myself, hey, in a week, the next time you go to record a podcast, remember to change this. So I do that. 
In the middle of podcast. In the middle of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're total professionals here. Absolutely. Don't try this at home, people. Kenny, get this audio right. Fix it or fire it. We ought to fire that engineer. He's that guy. Is he even here today? No. I hadn't seen him since the day we hired him. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the basement. Someone stole my stapler. It- Excuse me. Exactly. You, I, I believe you have my paper. I need to watch that movie again. I did not receive a paycheck. <laughs> That's such a good movie. Let's be sure I remember to hit record. I did. I'll be down. We're recording on but all I mean, fronts. You want to talk about technical difficulty? I mean, I am really just fresh. We have, you know, we ride the motorcycle. We have comms so we can talk to each other. They suck. You would think that they could figure out how to make a comms as clear as a cell phone and a helmet. Yeah, it we, works like a cell phone does in a car with Bluetooth. How come it doesn't work that way? We have the latest and greatest motorcycles. We have the latest and greatest communications equipment by Senna, and they're garbage. They they're trash. <laughs> Senna, get your crap together, Harley, man. Get your crap together. Yeah, really. Be sure if you're going to sell the things that you, they they actually marry together and they work properly and flawlessly. Oh my God, they're killing me on this stuff. You know, you look great on paper, but man, they can't make the shit work. I just think about the average consumer, say the average 60 year old guy that purchases a Harley. There's no way he can get that stuff working properly. There's is absolutely no way. Both of those two products. Yeah. It, it takes an extensive research and development by us, the consumers <laughs> to get the little nuances to work. So he, he, and, he says <laughs> research and everything else. Uh, it's trial and error and bullshit trying to get the stuff to work. It's not. Oh my. I just, I feel so bad for the average person that has spent hundreds and thousands of well, dollars. I mean, that's on the stuff. same thing trying to get, you know, get your cell phone uh, connected to the brand new car. It's like, Good God, how is this thing? Why is it not connecting? I think Laura's still, she's had her Lexus for what, a year and a half, two years, and she's still having problems trying to I see, really? get the, the Bluetooth or something with well, her cell phone hooked up to it. Anyways, That's she's easy. like, no. she goes, You do it. I don't drive your car enough to know what the, the issue is. Yeah, what's the problem? <laughs> Tell her to file a tech support ticket and I'll get back to her as soon as possible. <laughs> After a few laps around the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your phone and your car, and I'll see you on Tuesday. They they build these comms so you can be safe on the road, and you're they're trash, you're garbage. They are. It's, it's in a, and, and it causes Carter. you to fiddle fuck with it while you're We're, driving down the road on two wheels. It's bullshit, Senna. Get your crap together, Harley. and Cardo yeah. and Harley and all the other yeah. bikes. Good guys, just it is truly garbage. Oh, and dear God, don't have a. A friend with a Cardo unit wanting to talk to you with a Senna unit. You know, there you go. Yeah, boy. Bridge and Mary and. There's a college education waiting to happen. Please. But then, you know, the other day we were riding with a bunch of uh, old school guys that still had CB radios that are like huge. And, and, and guess what? Them guys were talking. And they were talking, yeah. <laughs> they went old school, like 70s, you know. Yeah, and you're on CB radios on a trike. I want I want a communications unit to where my mic is not on, not working until I press a button, either on my handlebars or on my person. Press a button to communicate. I don't want voice over. I don't want box nothing. I want it to communicate when I press a button to communicate. Hence, there will be no wind noise. I don't have to worry about. A sensitivity for wind noise because when I'm doing 120 miles an hour down the highway, your sensitivity is not blocking out my wind noise. You don't have a setting for that. No, no, and I agree with that. And it's, I mean, it's just garbage. I mean, in Harley puts a push to talk button on the handlebars, but and they have their own model of Sunna branded uh, equipment that's spe- specifically for their bikes. But the push to talk doesn't work for that. No. no that's for the that's intercom for that's the back a rider. Different piece of shit system they have on there. <laughs> right. 
it's like, how do you get the push to talk button to work with a center? So I push it and I talk to everybody we're riding with. I let go. He doesn't hear my music or my conversation with the passenger or anything else. I mean, it, uh, that's it. I've been talking about this for over a year. That's it. Stop. We are going to get GMRS radios. We're going to get some kind of push to talk system and we're going to use GMRS. And you can blast the stereo on your bike as loud as you want when you're going down the road. You don't have to listen to headphones. Oh, oh, oh. so and when you push to talk, it automatically mutes the stereo immediately. No. Oh, I kind of, yeah. No, you'll just hear the radio in the background <laughs> when I'm yelling at you on but the radio. I mean, right, Wayne? <laughs> I mean, we got AI doing everything else, but why can't when I push to talk, I talk, but it mutes. I take that back. It pauses my music. Because I, I do want to continue hearing the song. It pauses my music, and then when I let go, it picks back right. up. I'm just talking about utilizing GMRS as comms. And that way, we can also talk for miles, not when the tractor trailer passes in between us. You lose and now I can't hear you anymore. <laughs> hey, did you die? Did you just get killed? Hello? Hello? Oh, there you are. Okay. Thought you died there for a minute. No, just couldn't hear you because you were nine feet away from me. And this is technology they have, but they haven't figured out how to make it all work together. It's just like bullshit. I mean. It is. <sighs> Total bullshit. I want to utilize my First Amendment rights and say it's bullshit. Harley, get your shit together. This is bullshit. Beep, maybe beep, beep. maybe Indian got their shit together. Maybe we go to Indians next. Yeah, maybe. I'll go back to a Honda. i tell you what, the first motorcycle company that comes up with that system that works i may just have to go to that one which one's that whichever one <laughs> don't say that out loud no <laughs> what company is that <laughs> yeah no i whichever one comes up with the technology first what happened yeah okay hear that see here we go not that we didn't pay more than five dollars for this thing. This is the best soundboard that you can buy. Hey, guess did, what? Did Senna make decided, this? It just decides to. Oh, were you talking? I didn't allow your 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 all your audio to come through. Did Senna make this? I have no idea. <laughs> Here we go again. And this is what it's like riding down the road on a motorcycle. Exact same. Hey, do you me talking? What? All right, let's try this setting and see if it works for a moment. Yeah, this thing should have a button that says podcast, best setting ever. Boop, press that. Again, I don't get it. Why not? I don't know. It actually does. So let's see. All right, for the rest of the podcast, we're going to use this setting. Tell me what you think. All right. Why are you just going to play with the sound? Now, this yeah. this would be the one where, yeah, I can already tell what's wrong with this. See? Yeah, oh. so I'm going to get two handheld GMRS radios. And you may have to take one little speaker and put it into your ear to be able to hear. And it'll be just a little wire that comes down. But you just put one little thing in your ear. And then you'll have a push to talk button. So it's hardwired. Hardwired. Let's do it. <laughs> so much for using technology. Then, well, I mean, Current why? technology. Yeah, it's garbage. It's trash. And it doesn't work. And we bitch about it constantly. <laughs> You know? And we bitch every time we use the GMRS in the Jeeps. I I just throw my hands up because half the time I'm rebooting my system because it sucks. Well, you know what, little those handhelds I'm talking about. Yeah, I know they exactly. Work, they work yeah. perfectly all the time, every time. Mm -hmm. The ones you send your kids to the theme parks with. Yeah, work good. Talk to them all over Disney. Work great. What is that FRMS? GMRS. It's GMRS, yeah. but then they call it FRMS or something. I like family. I gave so. Yeah, she had that radio, but I was using a UV a UV five R, Baofeng UV five R. Yeah. Okay. That thing is the greatest radio ever made. Well, then maybe you should pass that technology on to Cena. No, I'm gonna keep it proprietary to myself. When I get this working, I'm not telling anybody. I'll just be like, "How come it? How come it works so great for him?" Yeah, I'm not sharing. Well, well, damn. Just me and my little buddy. Just me and you have it. Everybody, oh man, they talk good. What what kind of no, nope, not telling you. <laughs> it cost you. <laughs> Coin operate. Well, Bruce, don't let don't let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. I had him sign an NDA earlier. It was fun. A big old pop. That's why I had a 
paw prints all over the carpet. <laughs> or one paw print. We yeah. got some football coming up Sunday. Chiefs, Ravens. Oh, Chiefs boy. Chiefs and Ravens. Not really. I don't have a dog in that fight. But I tell you what, I do like the NFC game, the Lions and the 49ers. I think that'd be a good game. That's go- that's the game I'm really looking forward yeah. to. Yep. Yeah, Glock Purdy, man. He's looking good. <laughs> Glock Purdy. Mr. Irrelevant, man. Got to give it to him, man. He's earned his paycheck. Whatever that is, it's going to be big. Huge. Is that what Trump says? Huge. Huge. <laughs> Huge. Well, I see a report here where, you know, squatters, people, yeah. you say you're selling mm-hmm. your house and you go to show it one day and a, a family of 95 has moved and in. And you can't throw them out. You can't get them out, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're starting to do that to boats and marinas now. Mm-hmm. Ooh. That's oh, okay. I've, I've, I've heard them in campers and campgrounds. I mean, somebody goes to the store and they come back and somebody's living in their camper and like, holy crap, get out. No. It's ridiculous. When does somebody get to steal a damn residence or camper, boat or whatever? I mean, that's just stealing. I just, I find it hard to believe that our local county sheriff would let any of that fly. I don't, I, what do, do we have the same squatter rights here in Nassau County, Florida? I that think is so. The, I think if they're in there for a certain amount of time, you can't do anything. You almost have to get an, you have to go through the courts to get an eviction notice. That's the only way to drag them out. And then they have 90 days to get out after that notice. Be, meanwhile, they destroyed your investment. Oh, and you can't go and shut the power off on them either. Right. You got to keep paying the electric. Yeah, you got to like, keep paying the mortgage. You got to yeah, pay you gotta keep all paying the everything. You got to make sure they got gas for the stove and electricity and water. And it's like, what? They, they broke it in my house and stole it. So the first time I ever heard of this situation was probably 15 years ago. One of my technicians I worked with, he owned like 15 or 20 different rental properties. Mm-hmm. I don't know why the guy was my transmission tech because he, anyway, had so many properties. But so he's telling me all these problems. I'm like, do get a big dog and a gun and go into your home and get these people out. He's like, no, you can't do that. I was like, what are you talking? Are you serious? He's like, yeah, you can't do that. No. Nah. He said, the guy squatting in my house that I already had three eviction notices on then calls me and tells me there's something wrong with the front door. It won't shut properly and wants me to come fix it. Well, he broke it trying to get into the place. He broke it. And I said, wait, wait. You're telling me the guy's living in, you can't shut the power off. You have to keep the water going. You got to keep the garbage service going. And you're paying the mortgage to the bank on this place. And the guy calls with a complaint. He's like, yeah. So I go to cuss him out on the phone and tell him to get, and something just tells me, yep, I'll be right there. So he goes over to his truck, hops in his truck, goes to the property, and he's looking at the door, and he's fiddling around with the doorknob, and he's like, ah, oh, I need to put this on my truck. Takes the hinges off, lays the truck on the tailgate of the door, and he's he's working with the yeah, man, trying trying to get this. Hey, let me let me run the lows and get a part. And he just drives off with the front door in the back of the truck. He doesn't go back. <laughs> so he stole the front door off his own house. Yeah. And three days later, he went back and they were gone because they didn't want. They didn't feel safe in the home because there wasn't a door there anymore. So the squatters left. Well, what he should have did is, hey, can you guys come outside and hold this for me? Go inside and lock the door. Okay, you're on the outside now. <laughs> yeah, that would have worked out great. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna, I'm messing with it. Will you go on the outside and tell me if the lock's right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm sorry. With castle laws in Florida, whether you like them, love them, or hate them, but with the castle law in Florida. If there's a trespasser in your home, how is there not? I just don't understand. You see what I'm saying? Say I went to the grocery store and I come back to my house and someone had moved in. Well, they got a big problem <laughs> with the castle laws in Florida, you know. Depends if they're uh, a violent um, burglar or a <laughs> nonviolent. I mean, if, it, if they're violent, then you can use the stand your ground law. Right. But if they're just like, no, I'm just having a sandwich, 
and I'm not going anywhere for a while. <laughs> You're kind of hosed. <laughs> well, that conversation will be between me, the squatter, and the Lord above, right? Mm-hmm. So who would? Oh, I agree, but I'm just saying. It's, uh, yeah. Um, he violently ate my last chicken wing. Well, I think I would have just said, nope. He threatened me, whether he did or didn't, you know, just wear his ass out and throw him up front door. I, I just... I personally know our sheriff in this county, and I think we could make a phone call. Can you please drag this person out of my house before I do? I just don't see. I don't know. Maybe there's I'm uneducated, you know what, but I, it boggles I, my mind that you can be a homeowner and somebody just take your home. Well, see, I would much rather the intruder call the sheriff to come out to my house than me call him because I'm going to throw his ass out no matter what. He calls the cops and says, well, I was trying to just get a ham sandwich. He threw me out. <laughs> Let him try to explain it. I don't need to. <laughs> Deborah, you know, your little story, for whatever reason, just reminded me of that episode of Cops <laughs> where the, the, the two women are in the park and they call 911 because the drug dealer that they just got their, their drugs from stole their money and they want they want their money back. From the drug dealer, yeah, but it was like or, yeah, dude, or, there's, or there's some kind of deal. He had a change or something, and he didn't. Com- wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> Let me understand what you're asking me to do. Yeah, yeah. The, the the drugs is bad. It, oh, oh my! God. You right called nine one one to report a bad drug deal? Are you kidding? Is that what you just did? Yeah, exactly. I remember. Yeah, I want my money back. <laughs> that was a great episode. Be right there. Please don't go anywhere. Please. <laughs> the guy, and make sure you hold on to the drug so we can run it. <laughs> yeah, the, the cop responded. He's like, I, I, I got to check this out. <laughs> I just want to be clear. You dialed 911 to report a bad drug deal. Okay. I, there's one on there, too. I was on YouTube. It was a lady. She had left the bar. She was hammered. And... um hit a curb and all kinds of stuff and some, you know, bystanders call the cops, cops show up and they're asking, have you been drinking? Yeah. I was at the bar. It's my birthday. How many have you had? I don't know. Six or seven. Well, you know, you're, you're you hit a, I forgot what it was a pole or a building or something. It's like, yeah, but uh, you need, you're going to jail. Oh no, I'm not. It's still my birthday. I mean, she threw a fit. It's my birthday. I'm not going to jail tonight. Oh, you have a claim? Yeah. You, you. <laughs> it was like, really? I mean, she was like one of the, when Karens go wild, it was something crazy. It was like, what the hell? I mean, she's like, no. I mean, she was adamant. You're not taking me to jail. It's my birthday. Oh, yeah. You can't arrest nobody on their birthday. Yeah, we can. It makes paperwork real easy. That's probably <laughs> when the number one DUIs happen is on somebody's birthday. Yeah, that's when field three <laughs> and field four match. <laughs> the date of the arrest like, and your birthday, they all like, match. Good Be grief. Right. I mean, she was throwing a fit, and she was kicking and screaming. She was not going to jail. Somebody told her, it's okay. It's your birthday. Yeah. We got cake for you at the jail. Come on. Oh, Okay. No, no. I got these nice new bracelets for you. Put them on for me. You can't get arrested on my, on your birthday. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. And she did. It was, God, she was so entitled. It's my birthday. No, I'm not going to jail tonight. Have you seen this story of the four Kansas City Chiefs fans and three of them were found dead in the backyard? Yeah, frozen backyard? or something like that. Yeah, in the backyard after the game. This story is getting weirder and weirder. And now... The homeowner, his story starting to change a little bit. So he's a scientist with a PhD, has a job, but slept all day Monday, half the day Tuesday. I don't know. His team won. Yeah, but who who doesn't have to work on Monday? He had the whole day off, slept on the couch. People came over, knocking on the door, looking for people and – and on what drugs you were taking the day before. For two days, three of his friends are frozen to death in his backyard. So say I get locked out of your house mm-hmm. and I can't get back in. I go somewhere else. Why do they freeze to death on the back? Their cars are parked out front. Okay, so maybe their keys are locked in the house. Grab a rock, break your buddy's window, go inside, get your keys. 
leave twenty dollars on the counter for a broken window as a good gesture and get in your car and go home. Don't That's twenty freeze. bucks is not a good gesture, but don't, go ahead. Don't, don't freeze to death. On, I'm not going to die. No, no, true. Porch. I mean, hey, you know, at least get some duct tape and cardboard and put on the window holes before you leave. Yeah, <laughs> and all three of them passed away. Yeah, but something's not right. I have a feeling. Do you remember the movie uh, Wolf of Wall Street? Yes, they were eating all the, the, the lemon quaaludes. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking that those guys might have had some quaaludes and just a little too slow, couldn't react and get inside, and this guy slept inside. I mean, I'm thinking that those guys had some lemons. So what if they they were all what if they were all sitting around a fire in the backyard and they just got absolutely hammered, smashed, and passed out? Do you think it got so cold so fast that they could have died before they woke up? Yeah. Why not? I mean, yeah. if they're not drunk, absolutely. Hypothermia kicks in, your body temperature just Damn, drops. Maybe that's what happened. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, it is bizarre. I want to see the uh, the outcome. Something's involved because the guy that lived there, like, slept for two days. Again, I'm and thinking. The, the cops had to break a window to get into his house, which sounds like a you know, violation of his. I wonder if they left $20. Of his right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, there's 20. Sorry about the window. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, these guys are on some kind of drugs and they all went to sleep. One guy just happened to make it into the house, the other three just laid in a chair and took a nap. And well, they're, they're still napping. I'm telling you, they, do, just don't they do an autopsy, a tox, uh, toxicology report. I bet there's some. It's still a, uh, supposed to be a couple of weeks before that comes out, but they they had the brother on, one of the brothers on Fox the other day, and it's it's sad, man. Crazy. Something's weird. I'm just saying. Like Judge Judy says, if it don't add up, something ain't true. Or it ain't true if the math don't. What, what's that Judge Judy quote? <laughs> it's funnier when she says it. Oh, right, give it another shot. <laughs> what's that what's that what judge judy says if it don't add up it ain't true i don't know yeah i think i may have watched one don't watch judge a judy. partial episode or something judge judy don't put up with shit <laughs> no all right buddy so dun, dun, dun. and you saw our Favorite governor dropped out of the presidential race. I liked his chances and odds at the very beginning a lot better than I did last week. I just, I think my he, whole outlook on DeSantis has has dwindled. I must say, I think that that probably happened with a lot of people in the in the U.S. He's well, such a strong governor. Did so many great things for the state of Florida. And just, I don't know, just. Um, I think he fell into Trump's, I don't want to use the word trap. Jet wash. And just, no, and just got into weeds in the dirt with Trump, with the name calling and everything else. And it just wasn't a good look for him. I just think he got into the, the dumpster with Trump on name calling and everything else. And mudslinging politics has never worked for me, though. You know, the one guy that shuts up and says what he can do for me mm -hmm. is the guy that I listen to, not what everybody campaigns now on what the other guy is doing or can't do. And they never talk about themselves, what I'm here to do. They don't, when they stand up on their soapbox, all they're doing What's is it, bashing what was the it, other what guy. was the other candidate that um, went out right before uh, DeSantis? Ramaswamy? Yeah. yeah. I thought he was doing great in the beginning, but then he got into the dumpster with uh, that comments. Last debate with, with, yeah, he, yeah, he got into the dumpster with Trump and Elm on calling name calling and yelling at people, and it's like really, yeah. And, and, he, and, and I thought he had a good that, message in the beginning. Prior to that, everything that comes out of that guy's mouth, I relate to. I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, you know. He, and I it's think it's hard to disagree with what he's saying, and. The moment you start mudslinging and name calling, it's just shallow, and you, it's just you know. And I and I think I think Nikki Haley's, for the most part, stayed away from it. Every now and then, she'll fall into that trap. Um, but for the most part, I think she's tried to take the high road on the name calling. And but I, I've caught, I've 
watched a few times as she's kind of got down in the mud a little bit with some stuff. Like, oh, not a good luck. It's like they just have to. Yeah. You know? well, and, and most of the time, it's just a defense mechanism in them that comes out just to retaliate. You know, it's like, uh, you know, your mama. No, your mama too. And it's yeah. like, it's like whoa, 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 whoa. What, what are you talking about? You know, but it's just a, a reaction of, def, you know, a de- you defense mechanism. You keep my mother out of this. Yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> come on, let's stay out of the mud. Come on, just, you know. And, and again, right now, I don't even think Biden can spell mud. <laughs> Do you see that photo op? He's getting run through the ringer in social media. Oh, is this one the hard the, hat on backwards? The, the, <laughs> those right. workers put the hard hat on backwards, and he's just getting burned. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, he's uh, oh, Mister Biden. Yeah, he's you know, and the Democratic Party saying, "Oh, he's running," and he says. Oh, I can I can make it to the front door. It's like, dude, that's not what we're talking about running, man. <laughs> running for rest. Oh, I thought we were gonna see how fast I can do a mile. No, you can't do either one, buddy. He's like, we gotta do this again. Yeah, he didn't remember the first time he did it. <laughs> oh my God, this guy's man. But I tell you though. Uh, Someone that's made a, I think, 180 degree turnaround is um, the senator from Pennsylvania, Fetterman. Oh man, he's calling out the Democrats. He said, uh, Menendez, the say, oh, you ought to be fired. He should be gone. He should be in jail. No, he should be out of the Senate. I mean, he's, he's calling them all out. Yeah. And there was some bill they were passing, and he went with the Republicans. I'm like, dude, I mean, I. I think his medication's kicking in. I think he's <laughs> or, or the drugs that he was using is wearing off. I don't know. <laughs> but uh when he's clear minded, he's uh doesn't seem too bad. It's like good on him. Still wearing cut off hoodies and shorts, but whatever. Yeah, the last two or three statements Featherman has made, like getting ready okay okay let's let's see what kind of commit oh well, that's, that actually makes sense i agree yeah exactly <laughs> and then yeah. a, a week later he came out and said something else i was like holy shit i think so too i think rehab why, why am i agreeing with fetterman i think sudden? his rehab work he's not like in a drunken stupor now and he's sounds very coherent and much with it now, compared well, and, and 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 good on him. Well, you know, and congratulations because he was. I think he had a stroke, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and the stroke victims they put him on uh, Topamax, which really brings you down to a third grade level. Mm, okay, and I'm thinking that this guy might have been because of his strokes and seizures and stuff. They had him on. Uh, most people call it Dopamax, but it's called Topamax. And I, okay. I bet he was on that, and he just had no idea where he was and what and he was saying. Last, last couple of times he's been on the, the boob tube, he's uh, made a lot of sense with everything he's saying. And the Democratic Party, the people that have got him in, is probably like, oh, what do you say? Oh, shut up, man. Oh, whoa, hey. hey. Where's his medicine? But, yeah, no, it's uh, he's actually coherent and making sense. Don't agree with it all, but he is making sense. Did that come out right? Yeah, I understood what you meant. Anyways, so what else we got going on, Billy? We're going to eat some steaks tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Billy got a new grill yep. smoker. Grill smoker slash, yeah, does well, everything. And we, and I'm hesitant because the last steak I had, we went to an organization for steak night, and oh my god, it was the worst steak ever. I don't even know if that was steak. It was horrible. Absolutely. I mean, in fact, I was actually considering vegan. <laughs> I was seriously considering going vegan. I mean, it's like, oh my god, this is the worst steak I've ever had. And that's okay, buddy. Billy's my rehab. He's like, I'm going to make you a real steak. Bring you back. Get you a good steak in you. Fired up, ready to go, excited. Yeah, I'm hesitant, but hey, it might be my, my turnaround here. And oh man, yeah, 
It was horrible. God, I I, I almost yeah. wore off steaks forever. In fact, I have. I haven't had a steak since. <laughs> okay, it's been a week, but I haven't had a steak since. <laughs> That's all right. We're going to have a good one tonight. Yeah, it, why did I just lose stuff in my hearing? Quit messing with the Cena. That's okay. We're going to have a good one tonight. There we go. I may have, good podcast. May have, good may have found the, bu- the button that fixes everything. Uh, tech support? Tech support. Help me, please. All right, man. You ready to rate this bourbon and let's... Uh, Stick a fork in this podcast and see what's going on. And then, yeah. Stick a fork in a good meal tonight. So let me take another hit of this thing and rate it out. And again, John, I have my glass. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I'm having to do the old person trick. If you want to read something, take a picture of it so you can zoom in. <laughs> Let me ask you something. You taste orange. A hint like orange peel. I don't. Hmm. Mm, no, I don't think it's an orange. Um, That's what it comes off to me. Quite pleasant though. No, it's not an orange. But there, and, and I know what you're talking about. It, it is a flavor that it's an enhanced flavor in there, and I and I can't really make. I, I don't know, it may be an orange, but I just don't. I think I went first last time, sir. All right, Brothers Bond. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad. It's probably something I could learn to enjoy a little more. But I was just kind of, I was shocked at the, at the, I, I get a lot of, to me, it seems like orange or something that I don't think it's supposed to be purposely flavored like that or anything, but something it, in there. It, it could be in, in the their, barrel or what, whatever yeah, in barrel their, it was in. And their um, perfectly balanced experience is coming through. Um, but anyway, I'm giving it a five and a half. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's I I enjoyed it. It's good. It's very different though. Yeah. I I do not have a another bourbon in mind that I would compare this to. It's no, and, and I'm going to give it a six point five. Uh, and again, it it was smooth. It was, and you you always talk about how that first sip kind of burns a little bit. Yeah. This one didn't. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. I mean it was smooth. It was no burn. You did it, it is w- smooth. It, yeah. When you first taste it. I mean, before the ice, you know, waters it down and stuff, but no, it was a a smooth bourbon out of the gate. It's still smooth. I mean, the water makes it even smoother, but I I like it, but there is a flavor and I'm not saying it's orange. It could be, but I don't know, maybe some of the oak in the barrel, maybe a different type of oak. I don't know. Yeah. Barrel, but it's definitely I, they got I, something going on there. That's uh, I definitely recommend it. Yeah, give I it mean a it's, shot. it's a definitely worth it. Um, I have no idea what the cost was. My, it's one of the bottles I believe uh, Laura bought for us, um, so I couldn't give you a price point on this one. But I'm telling you, it's definitely if it's on the shelf, give it a shot. It's it's not bad at all. I actually like it. Wow, this is actually a thirty-seven to forty-three dollar bottle of bourbon. I'm telling you, it's worth every dollar. Then, and yeah, that makes that even a little better. Yeah, I'm liking my six point five at that price. Well, I'd want to bump mine up, so let's give it a solid average of a six. 
I think you should pick this bottle up and give it a shot. And, and Are you going to average this out then? Because I got yeah. a 6.5. I got a 5.5. Oh, 5, so oh, oh, so I thought you were going to bump it up. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Yeah, okay. so I, I had it down you. a little bit. You had it oh, high okay. a little bit. I like a 6. A yep. 6 is a great average number yep. for this. And uh, I think it scored well here on the It's the Bourbon you know, Talking Podcast. You're going for maybe everything we taste, we put a price on it and then kind of the taste, the flavor to the price. Because I'm telling you, for 37 this 40 bucks, This drinks better than it's priced. Yes. and Did I say that right? I know where you're going with it. Yeah. This this uh, this 35 to $42 bottle of bourbon um, is more like a 60 or a 70 yeah. I like it, yeah. I like it, yeah. No, it's definitely... It's got bang for its buck. Smooth. Yeah, you could probably drink the whole bottle tonight. I mean, with ease. I don't know how you're going to feel tomorrow, but... No, <laughs> you do that. I'd be comatose in the corner. You know, well, again, those, those guys in uh, can't just Kansas City fans. You know, I mean, bottles of bourbon did they go through to be outside? <laughs> they were warm for a while. Yeah, all right. but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no, it's a good bourbon, and it's really good for the price point. So, yeah, definitely give it a shot. If you see it in a store, pick up a bottle and um, try it out, and. Email us and let us know what you think. Yeah, please. That'd, that'd be a first. We haven't never gotten an email before. That would be a first. Give it a shot. We get email all the time. It's junk. We, we, <laughs> yeah. We like some good correspondence from our from our viewers. Matter of fact, first person that emails us about this episode, Jimmy's going to give them a, a prize. Yep. So be sure you email us at info at it's the bourbon talking dot com. And be the first one to get a prize. Hell, even the second one might get a prize. <laughs> hey, with that, have a great weekend. We're out here, Billy. Out here. See you next time. <laughs>